is on the inside of me. I am a giant because I walk as a king priest in the earth. I am a giant because I carry an, a, a prophetic anointing to be able to bring nourishment and encouragement and refreshment to those who are weary. So let's get that straight. The giant in you is the Christos in you, is the power in you to do the things that other people around you cannot do, to work the miracle, to release the, the sign, to bring the wonder, to bring the answer, to bring uh, the solution. So when we say that walking with giants or walking as giants, we're saying, yeah, God in you, Christ in you, Messiah in you, Emmanuel, God with us in you. All right. So that's what we're awakening. That's what we're releasing. That's what we're moving from inside to outside, from internal to external. Are y'all here? Are y'all with me? All right. So now that we got that straight, because some of you in this morning was like, oh, apostle, I don't know if I'm a giant. Listen, this is not anything to discuss with you. I am not discussing that with you. You are a giant. I am saying you're a giant, but now I'm explaining. I'm telling you that you're a giant because Christ is in you, the only hope of glory. I am saying that Christ, the King, is in you, so wherever the kings are, there, there is the giants. Wherever the king lives, there is the palace. There is the anointing. There is the, the awesomeness. There is the authority. There is the scepter of righteousness. Righteousness. <laughs> So let's not get this too complicated. You are the giant walking in the earth because Christ has chosen you uh, to be a place where his feet can walk. He said, I will just cause my feet to walk heavy in the earth and he's going to do that to you, through you. So let's get this down. I I've got this theme, of course, the walk of giants this week, but we're going to specifically look at during this coach scope. We're going to look at during this noontime brunch and lunch, we're going to look at something uh, that I have been walking with and working with for about the last five years of my life. And it has changed me so much. And I want to share it with you today. I want you to understand uh, what this thing is that causes us to be moving with such a power and stealth through the earth. I want you to understand that this thing that I'm going to release today, this word that I'm going to spotlight for you today. This movement that I'm going to begin to, to, to push upon you, your ministry, your life, and your business is called rugged reliability. Rugged reliability. And it has to do with how you show up, when you show up, the way you show up, how you maneuver, how you move product, how you bring ministry, how you engage social, cultural, spiritual systems is to be reliable, is to have a rugged reliability that shows up on time, that does what it says, that when you say, I'm going to be there, you do it. That when you make the promise, you deliver. That when you dream it and you say it and you put it together in your thoughts and then you tell anybody that you're going to do it, now you are reliable. You are responsible to be reliable. Let me say it that way. You are responsible to be reliable of what you have communicated. So, all right, I feel those taps. Y'all hear that. And so this rugged reliability comes from one of my one of my clients who lives uh, in the mountain uh, time zone, she's a Colorado girl. Uh, she works with horses. She has a, a ranch. She's a rancher and she works on the farm. A and this woman helped me to understand the word rugged. Rugged is when you don't try to be nicey, mamby, pamby. You don't try to do the naily, girly girl. When it's time to deliver, when your character and content is clear, when you understand your assignment and that you are called of God in the marketplace and in ministry, when you are a parent and you got to get up and show up every day for your five-year-old, for your 15-year-old, even for your 25-year-olds, you've got to have a ruggedness about you. You cannot be soft. You cannot be a 
punk. Can I say it that way? You cannot punk out because it's difficult. You can't punk out because it's hard. You've got to have a ruggedness about you to be able to show up, show out, and put it on the table and put your hands back and say, here I am. I said it and I did it and I'm good for it. So that's what I'm trying to release upon the body of Christ, that we need to have a rugged reliability. Now you would say, Dr. Yolanda, what does this mean, this reliability? I got rugged. It's like tough. You know, you're not, you're not soft. You know, you're, you're in the game. You're in the fight. You're in the movement. You're keeping your word. You're delivering as you said. Now, let me tell you about reliability just because the two go together. I want it rugged reliability, not just reliability, because this ruggedness means I don't take down. <laughs> I won't turn around. I won't back up just because it's 430 in the morning, just because it's 10 p.m. at night. I just keep going until it's done, right? But this word reliability means this, really, uh, the ability to be relied on and depended on for your accuracy, honesty, and achievement. Now, you got to hear that. You can't tap on this. You got to listen to this. For your accuracy, honesty, and achievement. It means that whatever you're attempting to achieve, whether it's relational, social, whether it's marketable, whether it's ministerial, you keep doing what you're doing with accuracy and with honesty so that people know they can rely on you. They can depend on you. That dependability is a cousin, a twin cousin to reliable. That means that we do answer, listen to this, we do answer phone calls. <laughs> If we don't answer them, we return them because that's honest and it's accurate and it's part of our achievement if we're going to be in business, if we're going to be a leader in ministry, if we're going to be a parent dealing with schools, if we're going to be a manager. We don't just do what we want. We are now accountable, reliable, and dependable, you guys, on what we say and what we do and what we promise and what we think and what we say we're going to do in our mind. All right, let's get it done. What we say out of our mouth, let's do it. So now listen, even if you're in the church, you know, hospitality area and you say, I'm going to bring chips and dip on Saturday for the women's meeting. You don't get to call us 10 minutes beforehand and say, oh, I can't come because you just don't feel like it. That's not reliable. See, if you're going to be on the door uh huh, and the usher and you promise that you will arrive at 10, you don't get to arrive at 1040. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm, I'm pushing you. I'm talking about giant status. I'm talking about leadership status. I'm talking about reliability that's rugged. It means we keep putting it out there the way we say it. And if we say it, if we write it, if we put our name on the list... <laughs> We are responsible now so that people know they can call on us. People know they can do what they can believe that what we say we will do. The worst thing as a leader and, and yet alone a giant is to say you're going to be this one and you're a Shrek. Do you not the real thing yet? You haven't really come into, don't be a Shrek. <laughs> Don't be a Shrek. Be a real giant. Don't be a, a, a eater. Be a real leader. You know, an eater is somebody who's eating away at their own self and they're not delivering anything to any other. They're an eater. They're an eater, not a leader. And so we need to not be Shreks or eaters. We need to be giants and leaders. Which means whatever comes out of this mouth, we are responsible to make sure if we have to break our arm, we're going to get it done. If we said it, we're going to do it. Is that okay? <laughs> oh, gosh. So the question we can we have to ask ourselves, and I wrote this down because I wanted to be able to give it to you, is are we yielding the same reliable results day after day in our life? our ministry and our business. Our people, do our customers know we're going to open the shop at 11 a.m. and that's what we're going to do. We're going to be there to eight. Or do we say, okay, nobody came at six. I'm tired. Okay. If you have a daycare and I'm coaching now, if you have a daycare and parents are relying on you to be open at 5 a.m. because they've got to be to their office by 6.30 or 7 at the latest, you cannot be sleep. Your bacon has to be frying. Your grits have to be on. Your stuff have to be ready because now your household is a place of rugged reliability. 
If you say that church starts at a certain time and the praise team is supposed to start and the intercessors start at a certain time, nobody gets to say, well, they got it because you have to show rugged reliability. I know I'm preaching a little bit. I know that this is, but this is part of coaching. It's when I take you by the scruff of your neck and shake you a little bit and say, you cannot get promoted and you will not be moved into higher levels of ministry, new levels of opportunity if you don't have rugged reliability. So I just want to release that to you today. (laughs) And I am training. I am training the body of Christ that you don't get to just say one thing and do another. You don't get to promise people something and then not deliver. You don't get to speak it out of your mouth, pray it out of your mouth, declare it from a pulpit, and then dump back it up with action, and with love and with, with with compassion and with reliability that's rugged, all right? So this is very important uh, for us to be the people that we say we're going to be. Now, I have one other thing, and <laughs> I'm going to release you to your day because I know I can hear you saying, oh my God, Apostle, why are you going like that? Like, you're just going in on us. I really am not, but this is a thing that I've been doing leadership training all weekend. I've been talking to ministers. I've been talking to those who are doing um, marketplace, and I'm finding finding that we're not always honest. Now, let me explain that because this is my last point for today. I've got some other points, but I won't have time. Uh, my, My main point is that when people look to giants, they look to people they admire. They look to leaders and ministers and business owners. They rely upon us to be where we need to be, do what we need to be. That means we need to set some time this week to return emails. Some of us are not returning emails. Some of us think that because people don't know us and they have us on a list that we're not responsible to say, no, I will not be coming. It's called respondez s'il vous plaît. Respondez s'il vous plaît. It means in the French, I'm responding to your invitation to come to your event. And I'm saying to you, scratch me off because I have a conflict. All right. I'm talking about reliability. I'm talking about leadership. I'm talking about giants. It means that if somebody does catch you off of your game and they say to you, I thought you were going to do so and so. And you look at them and say, um, 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 didn't you get my email? Didn't you get my text? I mean, I thought I said, I I think I sent it to you and you no, you didn't. That's not honest. That's not being reliable. So if we're going to be in ministry, if we're going to be in the marketplace, if we're going to scale mountains and replace wicked systems, then we cannot have these things dwelling in us. I'm smiling because I want you to know that I'm loving on you even as I'm saying this, that we need to say, you know what? I dropped the ball. I am so sorry. You know what? It went right off my radar. I completely forgot. Can I make it up to you in the next hour? Can I handle it by tomorrow and make sure that I fulfill my promise? I'm talking to giants. How do giants walk in the land? How do giants walk on the mountain? They walk with rugged reliability. They are dependable. They are accurate. They are honest. They are achievers who mean what they say, say what they mean, and show up when they promise. They set time, they meet time, they answer email, they respond to calls, and they respond, s'il vous plaît. They say yes or no, or maybe give me a minute. All right. Is this helping anybody? Rugged, rugged reliability, dependability. And so there's no liability on your character. So there's no liability on what you promise so that you do what you do and you mean what you mean and you say what you say. All right. Somebody said, yes, I love it. Now there are corporations that are doing this and they are meeting their goals. There are ministries that are doing this and they're meeting their goals. There are families that should set goals and mean what they say and do the same. And so what I'm saying to you is in our ruggedness, in that early time, in that late time, we don't miss a beat. We're always doing what we say, always showing up the way we promise, and always delivering because people are depending on us. They're depending on our word. Let our word be our bond. Let our word be golden. Let our word be filled with grace and mercy. Let our word be true. And let God God's word in us, God's character and Christos in us really show up 24-7, 365. 
tap, 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 tap. You know, well, this is our word uh, for today. We looked earlier at steadfast and unmovable this morning, kind of motivating you around that. At the top of the day here at Coaching Time, we really wanted you to move more into rugged reliability if you apply and if you put these pieces into your day, into your week, into your life, ministry, and business, I can promise you that the return on your investment, that the return on your time will